Hello, and welcome back to Trash Bug Toy Reviews, where once a week we take a look at one of the items in my collection, ranging from the cute and cuddly to the deliciously monstrous. Today we are checking out the super, super awesome SH Monster Arts Hedora set. Let's get right into it. So Godzilla vs. Hedora came out in 1971. It was one of the later movies in the Showa era, and it was by far the weirdest in that era of movies. If you see the film or you're already familiar with it, this is like a 60s drug-fueled hallucination movie. It is wild. There are some of the wildest scenes we've ever had in a Godzilla movie. And hey, this is the movie where he flies. So why not give him also the scariest monster like ever? Hedora is a intergalactic microorganism thing that feeds on pollution and grows bigger and more powerful because of it. So for those coming back to the channel, or those new here, I take a look at toys for my reviews in three core categories. I look at the sculpt and detail, the paint and color applications, and the articulation or the pose. With that in mind, let's talk a little bit about Hedora. So starting here from the top with the sculpt and detail, you can see just looking at the front here on Hedora, she is just gorgeous with the detail. You have this like cracking detail on the skull that you saw in the movie. The eyes are sculpted out amazingly, everything looks perfect. You got all these goopy, nasty tendrils that go down her body. And this is like the hardest part that I think you could capture on the figure is just being able to move it around and still get this nice detail. You know, we're going to talk about articulation in a little bit, but just know that the way that this is designed is really, really cool, despite the fact that it is an articulated figure. We've gotten a couple of Hedora figures over the years from Bandai, just with their standard tagged figures, and we've definitely gotten some hits, and we've definitely gotten some misses. This is definitely going to go in that former category, though. She is just amazing. You can see her toes are all perfectly done. Looks again like that goopy pile of nastiness. The detail under her arms is incredible. And then going to her backpack again, just everything is sculpted out beautifully, especially lifting up this little back piece here where you can see the whole thing. It just looks spot on. Going down the tail again, just what can I say? They nailed it with her. All the detail is exactly how you'd want it to be. You know, it's the best you can get short of having this thing actually melting on your table. Obviously, she has taken home a five with this area. Now in terms of color, I do really like the way that she's painted. She has this light gray color that's over most of her, and this darker gray color that's on some of the pieces, especially towards the bottom, that makes this nice little contrast as you go down on the uh, body of the figure. In addition, you have a little bit of red mixed in, as you can see on the chest here. Under the arms, you have her signature like lime green, almost yellow colored, like ish going on under there. It looks super cool and looks super toxic. It just looks like you're gonna get sick looking at it. Her eyes are beautifully done. Like these are, I cannot state enough how well done these eyes are. It looks like it's probably just stickers on the eyeballs themselves, on the irises, but it's still so well done. I really like the eyes. You can see again going on this crack on her skull, it's got that little bit of like yellow coming out. Again, just looks like some toxic nastiness coming out of the top of her, which you did see a little bit in the movie, although Hedora again changed form constantly, so this is as close as you can get to a solid Hedora. Going to the back, we can see the color on the backpack is well done, though I admit it does look a little bit more like it's just kind of printed on there. It's not the best I've ever seen, but visually it does look very nice. I like how it almost feels a little bit like the pattern that you see on the Megalon shell, but still very distinctly Hedora. I don't love it, but it's definitely very well done. Going down the tail, again you see a little bit more of that red blending in. The only thing I'm going to say about this figure overall is that I do recall Hedora having a lot more of a dark grey colour overall in the film. I feel like this is a very, very good representation of it, but I feel like it doesn't quite 100% nail it. Just because of that, I'm going to give it a 4. Between that and just the backpack detail, not quite being to the degree that I would expect from SH Monster Arts at this point. Very, very good. Again, I'm not trying to undersell it by any means. It is just worth noting. If you're looking for super screen accuracy, Hedora does look a little lighter than she probably did in the movie. Although, again, a lot of the scenes are at night, so it's really hard for me to say. But all I know is that most of the time I was looking at a dark grey goop. So, just getting into the articulation, it's definitely not as good as the other areas. You can see up here on the head we have a ball joint. 
And this little piece in the back, the fact that you can lift it, really helps a lot with the articulation. You can see you can pretty much get a full 360 on here. I'm trying to be very delicate with this figure because I do not want to break it on anything, but you can achieve it. The arms are also on a ball joint, but again, just the way that this figure is designed to look accurate to the film with all these little tendrils and droopy bits hanging down, it means that there is a lot of spots on this girl where you just can't really get her to move at all. Like on the arms, all you can really do is move the hands, to be honest. Again, despite the fact that these are all on ball joints. Going down to the crotch area, you have these little flappy bits, which is really cool. It lets you move the legs a lot more than the arms, but the legs suffer from the same problem. The design of Hedora, where she has all of these little tendrils, droopy bits, and just all kinds of stuff that gets in the way, just prevents a wide, wide range of motion. It doesn't quite get as much as you would expect from some of the other SH Monster Arts figures. And while I'm very happy with what we got, it is worth considering if you are somebody that likes to do super crazy poses with these figures. Going down to the tail, again, everything's on a ball joint here, but just the design of the figure makes it very difficult to move her. The waist as well, I can't tell what it's on. It feels like a ball joint, but you cannot get it to move at all from where it is. There's just too much stuff in the way. So it's really only the limbs, the tail, and the head that you can move, and all of those are fairly limited. So I think I'm going to go with a three overall. It's very good for what I want to use her for, more or less just decorating my shelf, occasionally getting her into some really cool poses, but I'm not going to be doing any kind of crazy action sequences. It's just not possible with this figure. So in Godzilla vs. Hedorah, Hedorah has multiple forms. The biggest selling point of this set to me was the multiple forms that they included in this. It's not every single one, unfortunately they didn't have the landing form, which is the one where he looks kind of like a frog, but they included the water slash tadpole form and the flying form, which is so cool. This is the first time I can remember that we've gotten a flying form of Fedora outside of the YMSF figures, and in SH Monster Arts no less. This is an absolutely beautiful piece. I'm not going to go through the full review of this figure, but the detail is absolutely breathtaking. Everything about this figure is so nice. It's got the little claws on the bottom. Bottom, there are details on this figure that I didn't know Hedorah had. Like the little like thorax little piece there. It looks insectoid. It's so so cool. The eyes are beautifully painted in that crimson red. Again the pupils are just beautiful. Coming over here to the tadpole form, this one as well is just beautiful. We do get a decent look at this figure when it jumps out of the water. And it has that little slit down its belly, which I think is such a cute little detail. You see its little paws on here. Like, they packed so much detail and work into these accessories. There is no way I can give them any less than plus two for this review, because I think this is really what makes it. You have not one, not two, but three figures in this set. And if you pop the head off of this tadpole form, you can pop it right onto this landing piece here and add a whole nother display option. You know, the flying form, the tadpole form, they're not super articulated, but just the ability to add the options, so cool. And each of them comes with a flight stand, so you get to pose them all. And they take up a massive amount of space, all three of these figures together on your shelf, but man are they a piece. Just to shotgun some quick size comparisons, here is the Hedorah set next to our Fire Rodan from SH Monster Arts. Next to the 64 Godzilla from SH Monster Arts. Next to the rebirth of the 94, 95 Godzilla from SH Monster Arts. Again, I feel like this is one most people have. And then finally, the convention exclusive Hedora in the vinyl form. I can't remember what this was from, but it's like the 50th anniversary version of Hedora. They had a little event thing. I don't know. I just know that it was cool and I found it online for a good price, so I picked it up. This is the only of these standard Bandai figures that I have of Hedora right now. So now to wrap up this review, we have a 5, a 4, a 3, and plus 2, giving us 14 total points. Dividing that down is going to give us a 4.6, and as you know, I do not like decimals, so we are rounding that right up to a 5, which is great. I definitely feel like this figure has some weaknesses, but again, I feel like the fact that this comes as a big box set with multiple figures, and again, these are super rare versions of these figures. Only YMSF, to the best of my knowledge, has ever released like good versions of the flying or tadpole form Hedorah, and this is by far the best version that we've ever gotten. So I think a final score of 5 is totally fair for this figure. She is gorgeous. I'm so happy that I have her. I really think she's worth the money if you are looking to pick her up. Although at this point, I do believe she sold out of a lot of retailers and she is not cheap to get a hold of. But if you are a fan of Hedorah, definitely pick her up if you have the chance. Just a quick little edit. I did just check and she is still in stock on Big Bad Toy Store. 
It is a big price tag of 200 but she is still available as of the time of this recording. Anyways, thank you guys so much again for joining me for today's review. If you liked the video, definitely consider subscribing to my channel. I post videos like this once a week on Thursdays reviewing giant monster toys, dinosaurs, transformers, all the good stuff. If you liked the video, leave a like and a comment. Let me know what you guys are interested in me checking out next. Again, if there's an SH Monster Arts figure coming up that you really want me to take a peek at, leave it down below. If you want links to the rest of my socials, you can check my bio for my card link, or you can check me out on Instagram, that's where I'm most active at a Trash Bug Toys. I do tie-in posts for these, and I try to update you guys as much as I can with the toy news that I'm interested in. Anyways though, next time we'll be taking a look at the older Beast of the Mesozoic Diabloceratops. We of course have the three set coming out with the nestling, so I figured I'd take a look at it. This is another one that my friend on Instagram, Jerosaurus, had requested, so I figured it was time to get around to it. Anyways, thank you guys so much, and take care.